What's up guys and welcome back to the Star Series 12 qualifying finals where we're in game four BBC with one game me pwned with two so me pwned one game away in this best of five from fully qualifying and we'll see if they can do it so far the games have been very close BBC now working with a different stand in in Arise or Jason as you see on the right or uh, top right side of your screen uh, it's gonna maybe be a little bit more difficult for BBC to function given Five that stand in status remaining. but we'll see as they're definitely capable of winning these games I'm Mike Loris this time going to be joined Radiant by Grandis how are you doing man doing just fine and Arise definitely is a capable player I don't think this negatively affects Balkan Bears at least significantly Dyer as far as this game is concerned Meepon will open up with the Shadow Fiend and Venge and for Balkan Bears it's going to be the Axe Lion alright so we actually have a game where Juggernaut is once again going to be for the first phase at least completely ignored and the uh, the Troll Warlord is going to be the same Vengeful Spirit Shadow Fiend that's a little bit of a minus armor theme going there for Ten Meepo, and at the same time, remaining. they're heroes that are just extremely powerful in and of themselves, so it's Five maybe a little bit remaining. of a fragile start for Meepo, but these two heroes can do a hell of a lot of damage. Yeah, definitely, so it can be very scary to go up against, and both teams getting a pretty potent opening to start their draft off. With a lot of minus armor coming out from Meepo, they have a high amount of physical damage, and Balkan Bears, you definitely can't underestimate the power of a blinking axe and eventually a blinking lion. And it's good Ten that the Drow Ranger remaining. was banned out by BBC is, man, Drow with Shadow Fiend is just Five freaking terrifying, and Drow with Avengel Spirit is also pretty bad. But uh, for right now, BBC, they're going to need is high damage heroes time. to try to take down these two softer agility heroes. Axe is a hero that you really want to have on your side. Lion is as well. But uh, so far in the previous games, we've seen Meepwned just get ahead just by sheer laning. And that was even with lanes that you wouldn't expect them to be having an advantage in. So... BBC, though they do have some uh, two really good laners to start out with, they're going to need a lot more power in these lanes because characteristically they've been falling behind. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Meepo have a lot of individual power when it comes to their play. As far as the next round of bans, we're going to see Magnus and Sniper taken out by Meepo and the Troll to follow up that Drill Ranger ban for BBC. Alright, so yeah, Sniper was played previously by Pudrinho and Troll Warlord was played previously by Meepo uh, Mirage. Or, uh, yeah, so it was, you know, I guess, fair bans from either side. In a best of five, you do get a lot more time to uh, get more respect bans out. It will allow generally stronger heroes to get through. But, uh, man, if you just lose to a troll warlord, you kind of want to get rid of him. Especially a troll warlord with a lot of minus armor help. That is just not something you really want to deal with if you can avoid it. Uh, aside from that, it doesn't really look like there's any... Huge standouts that could be picked up right now. Still, Juggernaut is in the pool, but I don't think either of these two teams really prioritize that hero that much. Yeah, I think that's fair. I'd love to see a disruptor for Meepon, but I'm not exactly sure if that's something that they want to run. Yeah, disruptor would be fine. Actually, for both sides, it would be reasonable, but really for BBC, I don't know if they could afford to... Well, they shouldn't play a disruptor without Levi. That would just be like heresy, but... Uh, they really need higher damage right now, and Meepon, they're going to get another, well, not really a high damage hero. It can get there in the late game with that Death Ward, but uh, for right now, it's a little bit more survivability with that Voodoo Restoration. Being able to protect your Shadow Fiend is just as important as being able to synergize with his offensive capabilities. For Balkan Bears, they'll snag up the Earthshaker. It's going to offer them a long-range way to cancel that Death Ward. Coming up from the Witch Doctor and all around just a really solid support. A lot of control coming up from these first three heroes of BBC. Yeah, so they're not going to have any shortage of stuns. And this is going to dissuade Meepwned from grabbing heroes like Queen of Pain or Puck, who are very reliant on their mobility to get around. Bristleback is exactly not that type of hero. He'll charge right in. He doesn't really give a damn about what kind of stuns you have. And it did win Meepwned there first game so game one of the best of five was one off the back of the pig so uh it's a reasonable way to go and it's a little bit more minus armor i don't know if they're going to grab a fifth pick hero for even more minus armor but if they do man they're gonna be remaining. dishing yeah even with what they already have it's very scary you have the goo you have the wave of terror from the ventral spirit and the aura from the shadow fiend and a lot of physical damage to be buffed up by that between the bristleback sf and the witch doctor's death ward that's incredibly scary and BBC, they're going to grab a Wind Ranger. They did play it in game one, Hook. Uh, no, no, it was game two, I think. Uh, they did win with that. It was a pretty nice hero, just hold down the fort. Hook played a really good one 
Uh, I don't think he was up against a Shadow Fiend, but Wind Ranger up against what Meepwned have. I mean, it's nice in that you know the enemy team is going to have a lot of minus armor, which means you're going to take a lot of damage from physical attacks, which means that if you have Wind Run, you're not going to be taking any damage at all. So it's pretty sweet now for Wind Ranger to just have that almost get out of jail free button. And still, it's BBC just with a hell of a lot of control. As Wind Ranger's control is you know, far from reliable, but with fissures, with hexes and spikes, it'll be really hard for Wind Ranger to miss more shackle shots than she hits. So, Meepone's going to ban out that Slark, making sure to give a little bit of respect towards Pidgeotto as BBC. That has characteristically where been where their weakest point has been, the hero pool of Pidgeotto. Yeah, fair enough. Wind Ranger is one of those heroes that can also scale pretty well into damage later on, depending on the build that they go for. And I think all around BBC have a decent lineup, although it's not as focused, I'd say, Five as Meepone's draft. We'll just see what they're most scared of for this last pickup coming up from Meepone. But honestly, it feels like it could be pretty much anything. They are probably lacking an offlaner, and maybe banning out the likes of a Tide could be worthwhile for BBC. Yeah, they could take that precaution but at the same time you have a bristleback witch doctor vengeful spirit if they really want to they can go offensive with that as well it's going to be a faceless void ban um Radiant team pick. i don't really see any huge amount of synergy with the faceless void with meepone aside from that witch doctor ultimate which is to be fair pretty dangerous but i honestly don't know if meepone would have wanted to go for that hero it's a hero that's very annoying to deal with He's very mobile, but you have control everywhere, and you have tank heroes in the axe, wind ranger, shaker, lion can all disrupt that chronosphere. I wouldn't really be too scared if I was BBC, uh, but I wouldn't be scared of that faceless void at all. Ten seconds. I think it's still a reasonable ban at the very least. We'll have to see what Meepo and settle down onto. Five Another seconds. benefit of having that tight under it is it is a little bit of extra minus armor deal with with the gush, but instead they're gonna go for a Phoenix, and honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this pickup here. It really feels like the supports in lane are just going to be so annoying for the Phoenix, making it almost impossible to escape with the Icarus Dive. Yeah, so Icarus Dive is gonna be in it's gonna be the Phoenix's primary primary source of escapes. Uh it is possible that Phoenix gets a safe lane solo, so that will be a little bit better for Meepone, but overall, Phoenix, I mean, uh, it's kind of hard to peg this hero down. Ten He's pretty elusive. Remaining. He does end up doing a lot of damage if you can remain out of harm's Five way, but remaining. given the range of BBC's stuns, especially once they pick up Blink Daggers, Phoenix is not going to be able to sit in the back Reserve and time. either so Sunray or throw out those Fire Spirits, and if you can't do that, then, well, you're probably just going to die because he is such an inherently fragile hero. He's not really shutting down any huge source of attack speed either. Like, Axe's attack speed is almost completely irrelevant. Wind Ranger's attack speed, uh, I'm pretty sure the ultimate just sets it at maximum, so you can't really slow that down. And between that, yeah, it's going to be annoying for her, but she can deal with that as well. So, not too sure about this Phoenix pick. I mean, technically you can slow it down, and Fire Spirits is one of the ways that you can do that with Focus Fire, but I think it's pretty much negligible at that point. Even though it is minusing 100, I think she gets like plus 500 from the ulti. Oh, is it just, does it actually add numbers or does it just set it at maximum? I don't know how it actually works. I'm pretty sure it's adding numbers. Okay. Well, maybe we'll get the chance to find out. Because if it just sets it at maximum, then Fire Spirits will just do nothing except for damage. And they do some decent damage, but you kind of want to have more of just a reason to get damage. And BBC is going to grab a Medusa one more time for Pajunho once again. Uh, it's going to be a reasonable pick, but Meepone definitely have enough damage to brute force their way through that Medusa through pretty much all stages of the game. Yeah, I think this is a two. The Medusa this game is, I don't know, going to find it very hard unless the team finds a good initiation, which I think is going to be pretty crucial for BBC. Blink Dagger timing on the Axe, especially. Yeah, Blink Dagger on the Axe, and eventually Yapsor is going to want to grab a Blink as well. Hell, most of the heroes from BBC, with the exception of that Medusa, are going to want to grab some sort of mobility item at some point in this game. And that's not something that we will see really from Meepone. They are all rather linear heroes. Yeah, they'll get their items and stuff like that, but there's no item that just flips the hero on, like the axe picking up his blink dagger, or a bat rider with a blink dagger. Ten it's a, a linear game minutes. for them, and that has its advantages that has its disadvantages, mostly in Five that if they fall behind, remaining. they will struggle to get back into it. Yeah, we'll just have to see how it all settles down. As far as the introductions for both of the teams, Meepone going to be playing on the Radiant side of the map, with Simba handling the Phoenix, presumably towards the offlane. Honey on the Witch Doctor, Pylai die on the Venge, we taking up the Shadow Fiend, and Mirage or Exist on the Bristleback. And for the Balkan Bear side, we got Mascari playing the Axe, Pedrinho once again handling that Medusa. We got Jason or Arise playing the Lion, 
and Hook is going to be on the Wind Ranger. Yaps are going to be handling that last year on the Earthshaker. Arise and Hook have the uh, two carrot things. Are they on the same team? I actually don't know if Arise is on an official team right now. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure where he's ended up. It seems like he's just been standing in for the last couple of weeks. He's a mercenary. That's fine. There has to be some mercenaries in Dota. Him and Bignum, I guess. Just go wherever they're needed. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> Looks like we're going to get into this game and we'll see how these lanes shake down. Alright, so I wouldn't really expect really crazy things from either side. Just should be, well, especially Mass Carry grabbing that axe, him heading down towards the bottom lane, put the Wind Ranger mid, then have a nice defensive tri lane to protect that Medusa. And this defensive tri lane, it's not really going to be the most threatening since Medusa is kind of a weak link and Earthshaker is rather is more on the defensive side than offensive side but it's going to be going up against the Phoenix and though Phoenix does have quite a bit of regeneration if you are able to chain stun him he has very low armor he is very easy to bring down despite that regeneration so this is not going to be the most fun for Simba up on the top lane definitely so he does open up with the ring of protection to somewhat patch up that weakness but it's by no means going to be the end all be all Simba Trying to get out that early word, just can't find an opening to get it very deep into enemy lines. And he did say that Yapsor didn't have any Observer Wards, so he might think that he's safe up here. But he'll be wrong, because Arise was battle. the one with the ward, and they will put that one down to get closer tabs onto that Phoenix. We might see a rotation, actually. Uh, I don't know, these supports on Meepwned in the past couple of games have been wandering around quite a bit before they've settled into a lane, but it looks like they might actually join the Phoenix up towards top. The Phoenix does need his levels, and that's really why we see Phoenix solo, you know, almost 100% of the time. Definitely so, but solo, we've kind of already alluded to the problems with the hero just not being able to get very much out of the lane. We'll have to see what actually ends up happening. We're going to see Arise pick up the <clears throat> bounty urn for BBC, and then we get this, um, excuse me, bounty on the SF. So we're just going to have a little bit of blocking support from Pylai Dian. It looks like he will just have a fairly straightforward 1v1 lane. Taking a look at the base damage, Shadow Fiend should have a disadvantage for right now. I don't think that's ever not going to be the case. But uh, Shadow Fiend, assuming he gets a couple of souls early on, which could be a little bit difficult versus Wind Ranger, uh, he should be able to recover and stay, even if not slightly ahead, in this lane. But of course, it all comes down to him getting those first couple of souls. And then down towards the bottom lane, actually up towards the top lane, Symbol already getting really messed up. Fissure, Hex, just right clicks, man. This Phoenix is not going to have a good laning phase. Yeah, it'll cost BBC a handful of clarities, but definitely worth it. Right now, this Phoenix is completely or very close to completely zoned out. And the Axe, at the very least, has that fallback mechanism of the jungle where the Phoenix isn't so lucky. Yeah, it is possible to see a hero like Phoenix just get shoved out of lane and then will just be awkwardly pulling. I guess that's something that Phoenix kind can do. You just, you know, any anyway, hero can do that really, but you you don't really want your Phoenix to be doing that. Whereas Axe is more than happy to go into the jungle. Like, he is a pretty fast jungler as well, as long as you don't get, you know, only those centaurs or only mud golems, whatever. But just taking a look at this jungle, he already has the trolls. He already has the small satyrs. So if Axe does go into the jungle, and doesn't look like he's even going to do that, but if he's forced to, then he'll be just fine. But down towards bottom lane, they're going to throw the cask and a couple of snot charges his way. But it's going to be Hook drawing first blood in the meantime. They don't even get the kill on the Axe. Hook is going to get the kill on the Shadow Fiend, living just barely. Yeah, really at that point, it's just a situation of getting outplayed. A very close man fight between these two heroes, and Hook comes out just eking ahead. And that's huge in the lane, especially up against an SF, now down to three souls. And we needs a lot more souls if he's going to stand comfortably in this lane. Of course, he does have the level 2 raises, so that's pretty much guaranteeing some souls every single time you hit that button. And they're very cheap as well, so we is going to be in the lane recovering a little bit, where, yes. whereas Hook has to go all the way back to regenerate. It's a slight advantage, uh, a periodic advantage for Wii, in that he will recover from his death, but still, you never really want to be dying as Shadow Fiend ever, especially not one versus one versus the enemy mid laners, especially when it's Hook, who has already gone off with this Wind Ranger in previous games, so it's far from the best start from Meepwned. I think also Hani just, yeah, taking the express way back to the base. Yeah, that's going to be about it. Right now, they're angling up towards Simba, but they just haven't been able to find a clean opening. Even though the Phoenix needs to be careful and is being zoned pretty well, actually killing off the Phoenix is another story entirely. But we'll have to see. They're going to try with the Fissure opening up, and now with the Hex, Earth Spike to follow, and now Simba, one more Enchant Totem, and that's going to be the end of his life. 
He was so close to being able to get that Icarus dive off, but so close is not quite good enough. Pajuno dropping very low in the meantime, but he is not going to die either. Now 3-0, or I guess 2-0 in favor of BBC. One of those uh, neutral denies kind of inflating the score there, but... Yeah, the Phoenix was going to die at some point in this laning stage, and all it took was a couple of stuns. The stuns weren't even laid perfectly, the spike was still there while the Phoenix was hexed. But even with that, like, the physical damage of just an enchant totem is enough to jam it in. Yeah, right now Hook is, again, playing pretty aggressively up against Weeb. This time he has some backup. Shackle going to latch onto Wee, but can't actually get that kill. Fissure going to miss, unfortunately enough for BBC. One raise into Hook. They have a cast to throw, but actually going to hold on to it is Hani. And Hook will just back off and bottle up under his tower. And Hook's still doing decently in this lane. Now the threat of Shaker means that the Shackles are going to have a higher percentage chance of landing. But even if they don't land, man, Wee is getting just chunked down by these power shots. Level 3, as they should be with a level 5 Wind Ranger. And Hook is going to be doing just fine. But in the meantime, down towards bottom lane, looks like the Axe has had enough of that bottom lane. Mirage is going to get a free lane, and as nice as it is to have a Bristleback with a lot of farm, it's also a hero that you want to be active with rather early on, just because he can do so much. So, Meepone, they shouldn't really sit on this Bristleback for too, too long. Yeah, fair enough. We'll just have to see what he's able to accomplish with the farm that he is picking up. Axe has gone off into the jungle as Masquerade farms up towards his Blink Dagger. Right now, sitting on Tranquils. Not much else, but he is going to be accelerating towards that item very shortly. And it seems unlikely that Meepwned are going to be making any plays towards that Axe. Like, Bristleback is, again, not going to leave the lane anytime soon. Uh, the Venge Witch Doctor combo can mess with the Axe, but as far as outright killing him, it will be very attack. difficult, and Simba is not going to leave the lane, not when he can get some pretty easy experience there, so Axe is going to have a free jungling time, and it's pretty bad whenever you let any enemy jungler get a free time without punishing the lanes, the other lanes sufficiently, but Axe might be the worst, because once he grabs that Blink Dagger, you're in so much trouble. Simba, speaking of so much trouble, is going to take a Hex, and a level 2 spike is prepped. Fissure is there, and then the spike, then the right clicks. He has a dive out. He's not going to get hit. No, no, he will. Lion's right click from miles away is going to get the kill. Phoenix, for the second time, going to die. Yeah, unfortunately, Icarus died. Not going to disjoint those uh, attack projectiles and well, is going to lose his life yet again. At least he's managed to find himself level 4 and should be able to have some semblance of an impact in this game. But for now, the laning stage for Meepone just really isn't doing much for them. Bristleback is getting a decent amount of farm, but what he's able to do with it immediately just isn't clear. Well, level 6 is there, and well, this is kind of another problem with having a very linear power gain, is that uh, there's no point where you're just like, okay, I'm ready to go and do stuff now. If he was farming for a Blink Dagger, then, well, when you pick up the Blink Dagger, you're ready to leave the lane. It's pretty easy, but in this situation, do you get a Vanguard? Do you go right now and start roaming and start fighting? Do you get a Sanj and Yasha and then go, or do you just get the Sanj? It's like so many decision points to be made, and... Well, Mirage, if he just sits back and doesn't actually make a decision, Dyer's then his team will eventually fall further and further behind, Dyer's as we see that's happening over attack. on the top lane. We finds himself a double damage rune in bottom, as he's been farming up the jungle. There has been Hani in the middle lane, picking up the slack there and getting some experience, although even so, the Witch Doctor is pretty far away from his level 6 mark. Yeah, level 6 isn't really going to be a huge help to Meepone just yet, as uh, level 6 with the magic missile, maybe a cask bounce, might get a kill on some of the softer heroes, but uh, as far as killing off the Axe, even killing off the Medusa is going to be fairly challenging. She has level 2 mana shield, should be exactly where she wants to be at level 5, and she's getting a relatively easy time, but we've seen this previously, Pedrinho, even though he's in a very easy lane, He's not farming as well as you would really expect. And like he should be farming pretty much at the same level as Mirage, but Mirage is still leading the way in CS. Yeah. Mid lane is a little bit deceptive when it comes to that CS mark between Wii as well as the Wind Ranger because uh, Wii has been farming up in the jungle for quite some time. But still, Shadowfin finding himself a little bit of an edge as far as net worth is concerned, just with the raw flash farming potential of the hero. And is primed to be pretty darn scary this game. Looks like we're going to be seeing the Yules build. Okay, so from we it should be a relatively standard thing there. Uh, could be Ring of Aquila into Mech or something like that, or even Ring of Aquila into something a little bit more aggressive. But down towards bottom lane, oh man, look away for a second and Axe is going to be dropping. The minus armor is there, level 3 wave of terror with that snot, and there's not much you can do as Axe except for pop your magic stick and hope for the best. He's also gone for one point battle hunger, so that call armor isn't really going to last that long either. So it's Meepwned getting on the board. 
And it's getting on the board by getting a kill for a very important hero in that Bristleback and on a very important hero on that Axe. So, all things considered, Meepone gotta be pretty happy about that, especially since Pilot Die grabs an Invis Rune following. TP coming in, Mass Carry is ready with a call. And they're gonna try to look for a kill onto this Bristleback. He's very hard to kill off though. Mana Drain is there, Fissure Chain Stun Call will make him face the Axe. Take full damage from those spins, decapitated. And Jason, in the meantime, is gonna fight with Pilot Die. Finger of Death, though, leveled up. That's gonna be a double kill for Mass Carry, and Arise will survive, albeit barely. Meantime, up towards top, Simba is getting the screws put towards him by Pedrino with those phase boots. Zoning out the Phoenix pretty much solos his supports are off in other lanes and doing good work there, too. A really awkward exchange for Meepone. They Maybe thought that they could set something up with that invis around the bench, but just not going to be the case. Yaps or deep behind enemy lines. Not exactly sure what the plan is here. Maybe trying to spot out the Shadow Fiend, but he's up towards top as they wrap around on Padrino. Leaping forward by Simba with a magic missile and a handful of raises. Padrino is going to burn down to those fire spirits of Simba. Well, it's another kill for Meepwned on a very important target to kill off the Medusa, but you could get as many of those as you want if you're still losing more heroes than you're gaining, then you're going to be falling further and further behind as well. The bottom lane was just not how it was supposed to go. The control there from BBC was absurd. Like, Bristleback, he was standing there for so long, just not doing anything because he got hexed, spiked, called, and when you do get called, you're, you lose your uh, passive protection from the, from the Bristleback skill. So you take a lot more extra damage from the Axe in that regard, and, well, at that point, this Bristleback is a lot easier to kill off, so... BBC, they're going to look to do that many more times once Mass Carry grabs his blink, and that's not really too far away. Yeah, fair enough. We'll have to see where he ends up going with that first blink dagger rotation. We has been just farming up an absolute storm, currently sitting at almost 10 CS a minute at sub or 10 minutes here. We is really getting somewhat out of control, even though his KDA isn't that flashy. Yeah, but at the same time, he has to be very careful with the threat of control on the other end if he gets caught out a single time then a lot of his work can just go straight down the tubes Radiant's and maybe it's going to happen over attack. in the secret shop area jason yapsor setting up for an ambush but who's going to ambush who right now spike onto two and a little bit of creep blocking there fissure's going to fly dropping ventral spirit very low simba's going to dive forward has a supernova and a couple more fire spirits can he kill off anyone here it looks like he can't in the meantime mirage going to get shackled off in the back hook looking to disengage gets swapped back however snot is there Radiant's but we want to keep him safe for now to bottle up attack. get a little bit more hp he's going to run straight into a firebird though turn around for a power shot looking for that kill spike fissure onto simba a little bit more damage needed but they don't actually decide to engage because they know he could just press that ultimate button and be completely fine somehow no one died from that i don't know how that happened but everyone's gonna live yeah the big winners are we and pedrin hose they're farming up in the respective safe lanes and it might not be over yet everybody's still low chop one onto the witch doctor chop two on the simba Massacre collects big, and Mirage is now in an awkward corner. Mana drained up. This is going to be chop number three as Massacre mops up a triple. Blink Dagger is picked up from the axe way before that chopping even happens. So now 2 to 9, and BBC, unlike the other games, are just steamrolling their way past this early game phase. Now looking for a little bit more. Perhaps we sees them coming, and he will be backing off. So it's still a decisive lead for the BBC side, and this, this lead is just turning into more and more farm for this Medusa, who at this point really just needs the space. She is not farming very well Radiant's at all, but the Wind Ranger and the Axe, these are heroes that can hold down the fort so well, especially given this start. There's going to be a four staff soon in the Wind Ranger. Axe already has all that he needs to get going. Swap up top. They find Pedrinho with the magic missile as well, but he still has a little bit of mana left, and it's just the Phoenix as well as the Bench. They need to be careful, especially with Axe coming in from the sidelines. Potential turn on a Simba. Long range Fizzard. They just need a little bit more damage. They should be able to right click down this egg, and he's completely dead. And Phoenix kind of just panic supernova ing. I don't know what that call was about for Mass Carry, but it definitely didn't do anything. Except for waste a little bit of mana, but they get a kill on the Phoenix regardless. Now 2 to 10. And really, Meepone, they have to be kind of happy in the fact that the Medusa on the other end isn't getting anything like this is a very slow farming Medusa in this particular game but still they have to worry about so many other potentially even more dangerous heroes right now like even the Earthshaker he's getting to a point where he's gonna start to look to pick up a blink dagger of his own only a thousand gold in him right now but as long as he doesn't die if he keeps participating the way he has been then if he just stays near hook stays near axe then a blink dagger and Earthshaker can make things just so much more difficult for Meepwned and Still, what do they have going for them? A Shadow Fiend with Yules. 
it's nice, I guess, but they need a little bit more than just a Shadow Fiend. Yeah, I think that's fair. Right now, we kind of needs to make some big plays because he really is the only hero on his team that's getting a lot. They have the Vanguard on the Bristleback, and that's nice and all, but in and of itself, it's not going to be enough. Smoke up around mid, potentially looking up towards top as they set their sights on the Dusa. Pilot Die going to be leading the charge, and let's see if they're going to be able to connect Dyer's with the skill. Well, this time, Medusa already just doesn't have that much mana to begin with, so... She definitely will not be able to survive if they land a single form of CC, and Pilot Die gonna wrap around for that swap into Magic Missile. She does have backup incoming, got the Stone Gaze out first, gonna turn both Pilot Die and Mirage to stone, and then Simba. Here comes Mass Carry with the call, spike through. Mirage is gonna take quite a bit of damage. Death Ward from the side, though. Hani might get a lot of kills off of this one. Gonna kill off Yapsor. Echo Slam not gonna disrupt Hani. The uh, Death Ward still being channeled. Mass Carry is being focused in a corner. He will get the call out. Fail is called, though. Mirage should be able to clean up this axe. That's gonna be a 3 for 2 as they chase down the final hero behind the tier 1 tower. Hani delivering huge with that level 6 death ward that observer ward is not going to do jack i don't know why that happened but mirage is going to collect a double and just like that me pwned take a two for four trade off of a beautiful ultimate from hani you can't ask for much more hani just finding the perfect position there where there was actually just no way that they could cancel it bbc had already dropped their fissure and a lot of spells trying to protect the deuce then with witch doctor over inside the fog gets the full channel off that death ward which does an absurd amount of damage it's pretty insane and they clean up everyone thereafter in witch doctor it's not really like you're getting kills on the most important hero like witch doctor getting kills might lead to a fast agonim so that could happen in the future but honestly i don't really see that happening more than you know once maybe twice more in this game just because of how many forms of stuns BBC have. It just happened to be that that particular time, Hani was in the, the perfect place at the perfect time with BBC not having any more stuns, and you know, if they had a fissure or a spike, or if Windranger was uh, packing the four staff in a different position, Hani could have just been easily sniped out, and then that could have been me uh, BBC cleaning house, but instead that Death Ward just absolutely destroyed them, and they have to save some form of crowd control, at least respect the potential for that ultimate to come and just completely destroy all BBC. They're going to smoke up now, though. And they will not run to the Shadow Fiend because they're guessing the wrong way. Dyer's middle tower Maybe Shadow Fiend's going to run to them, but instead they're going to wrap around behind the tier 1 mid. There's nothing here for them unless they run into the Witch Doctor. Do they want to die of a tier 1 like this? They see Hani with that Observer Ward. And Power Shot's going to let Hani know exactly what's going on. He's going to get called, and I'm sure called soon enough. Spike is there. No call needed. TP coming in from Wii. Going to blink straight on out of there. But he still has a haste room. Wants to go back in. Shackle going to be thrown. Will lash to a tree. That is some wonky angle that that hit. But it will not result into a kill. It's just a single snipe off on the Witch Doctor. Yeah, definitely could have been a lot worse. If Wii is going to die, it's probably going to be a, to a similar rotation. Especially when he's sitting on a haste room. Blink Yules, he's incredibly mobile, so, I mean, it's not bad for BBC. The Medusa's farming in the meantime up towards top, but they would have wanted a lot more with the four-man smoke. Middle tower is under and attack. maybe that Medusa isn't going to be farming for much longer. She does have, or she had a Yasha coming out? No, it's just a Blade of Alacrity with a Perseverance, but here comes the Requiem Yule setup. Kaboom, but you know, down half HP, can't get the Stone Gaze off this time. Mass Carry not being able to blink because of that long range requiem sold not doing that much damage but doing enough to disrupt the t uh, the blink dagger they'll kill off the medusa and they also have four heroes here in total so this tower is also probably going to go down honestly i think one of the most impressive things there is that medusa wasn't instantly dead and that really speaks wonders to mana shield down towards bottom jason Potentially going to die solo to Hani. The cast does bounce back through. Do they have a way to cancel that TP? They do. Swap from Pylai, die, and that's going to be a dead line. Tier 1 tower up towards top, going to fall to the Bristleback and company in the meantime. And 8-13, to 13, BBC had a really good start, but it seems like off of that uh, previous top lane fight, they're just slowly falling further and further behind. As Shadow Fiend actually starts kicking into gear. We have yet to see Mirage fully kick into gear. Like, he did some work up in the top lane fight with when that Death Ward happened. But aside from that, he is just about ready to just go ham on the enemy side. He has almost the Sanjin Yasha, plus the Vanguard, plus Power Treads. And honestly, I don't really think you wait for any more items on Bristleback uh, before you go for, you know, some sort of huge, super aggressive play. But either way, Mirage is getting to a really big point. We is getting to a really big point as well with that Yule Scepter Blink Dagger. So... It might be time for Meepwn to strike back and try to get a little Radiance bit more of this advantage back in their attack. favor. Yeah, I definitely think that's fair. At the very least, exert some more control over the map. Right now, it's fairly even in that regard. And 
but the lead is in favor now of Meepone. They might not realize that they're in a lead right now because, well, five kills behind, you might not get that good of a read, but they are, in fact, ahead right now, so they might want to capitalize on the fighting power of Bristleback in a little bit once he gets a full mana pool by going for a mid lane tower push. Tier 1, unlikely that BBC are going to want to defend, but in the meantime, BBC, they are smoked up with a couple heroes, Finger of Death primed and ready, and this time they might run into Wii. That's a huge kill to take, but... Oh, once again, they guess wrong. If they just went a little bit more to the south, that could have been such an easy kill. Definitely, so it all depends on how fast Shadow Fiend's reaction times are with the Blinking Axe. It's almost impossible. Well, that's your SNY flying out to the Bristleback as we speak, and BBC, at least for now, they're not going to be able to find anything, but maybe they set their sights towards Roche. Hook going to find himself a haste and They'll just pop their head in and make sure that Meepwned are doing it. Yeah, the BBC side don't really have that great of a Roaching team. They have a really good team for fighting around the Roche pit, like especially that Medusa. That's where Stone Gaze is just a godly skill, but uh, the Axe is also pretty good there as well. But Meepwned are really the ones that can take Roche on. They have the level 4 wave. Do they have a Medallion? I don't think they do, but I don't think they need it either. They have Nasal Goo, plus Dyer's they have maxed out Presence of the Dark Lord. So Roshan, if Meepwned want to grab him, should be very easy for them to do so. They're going to chase down Weed though. Shackle is going to land. What angle is that? We in a lot of trouble right now is going to get called. Not too many spins here, but we still going to have to stick around. Death Ward from the low ground though. Hani once again delivering and it has to it'll force everyone else to bail out. Requiem from the side will kill off Mass Carry. Supernova is going to go off. Simba not going to do too much with that, but they save We. It's once again because of Hani's ultimate. In the meantime, Medusa does take down a tier one tower in the mid lane, so it's not going to be the greatest uh, the greatest win for BBC and they also start a fight down towards bottom for Pilot Die, Wee in a little bit of trouble but Finger Death won't kill off Wee again this guy is going to survive, Pilot Die going to get hexed up, Cask will be thrown towards a rise though Yaps are off to the side, still has a little bit of mana still can help out, Jason though will be able to run himself out Lion's safe and sound I can't believe that we just survived both of those engagements Ridiculous, and I mean, he's not even holding on to anything more than just that Blink Yules. His components for his BKB are all inside the stats. SF, usually a pretty target to bring down, but just with the raw mobility, and especially with the defensive backup coming out from his team, it gets a lot harder. Yeah, you gotta deal with the minus attack speed from the Phoenix. We even see now a level of Sunray being picked up, about when it should be, but the heal is there, so the Phoenix can offer yet another tool to try to defend that Shadow Fiend. And man, when you catch a out a Shadow Fiend like that, when you get a Call and a Shackle, you expect to get that kill almost 100% of the time, but we managing to survive, and they even get turned around upon and lose a hero. 9 to 13, and I don't really think that tower is completely worth it for BBC. Meepone, they just need to reload, you know, get their health back, get their items up, a completed BKB on Wii, because it's going to mean that next time that happens, he'll be able to turn around and do some decent work. But BBC, they have to worry about now a push incoming, or they have to worry about defending Roshan, either of which are viable now for Meepone. Right now, BBC have really good deep wards, spotting out pretty much every rotation coming up from Meepone, and right now it's a four-man group up, and if they smoke now, it's going to be a rise to spot out pretty much everything as he's invised up and well that is full five menu it's smoke immediately popped out by jason and looks like he'll be able to back off cleanly too and invis runes don't really get that much better you blow the entire plan of me pwned as their game plan was going to be find someone to kill anyone to kill then either go for the tier one tower and or roshan depending on how decisively they take that kill so Right now, Meepwn, they're going to be awkwardly wandering about as they don't really have a clear game plan. Simba is still smoked up because he was just out of range. He's going to use that to try to look for some heroes. He will find someone here in Hook. Has a 4-staff TP out, but he's going to be almost completely surrounded. No, he'll jump down to the low ground. Hani looking for a cask. Has it in range, but he will cancel it or will get fogged. Not entirely sure which. And it looks like everyone from Meepwn have to back off. Top lane and bottom lane are both pushing. Phoenix going to TP out after... Getting caught on the cliff, or not really caught, but just not finding the Wind Ranger with that Icarus dive. It'll start counter pushing up towards top, but needs to be so careful. He is dealing with the blinking axe after all. Sitting behind Pedrino. Yeah, all he wants to do Radiant's is try to draw the creep aggro away. Attack. He has no backup incoming either, which is really what BBC are waiting for. Someone else to come in so that the call doesn't grab just one. Ideally, you want to grab two there. So uh, that's not going to happen either way, as we is down towards bottom lane, just counter pushing that one out. Yapsor is behind him with the blink dagger. I don't know if it's possible for an Earthshaker to 100 to 0 the Shadow Fiend. It'll be close, but I think he will just fall short. Yeah, we'll just have to see. Right now, it 
looks like both teams are going to pull back in some way, shape, or form. Although we potentially collapsed upon that vision of hook, and now there's your blink Yule's ultimate combo. Oh my goodness, <laughs> death word for nothing but victory. That requiem, 100 to zero, poor Wind Ranger. Oh man, the death word. I don't know how much damage did that actually do. It did actually no damage. It was just a one hit kill. And that's a level 3 Requiem. I mean, Shadow Fiend is level 18, so that thing does a hell of a lot of damage. I don't actually know how much peak damage it can do, but let's just say enough to kill off a Wind Ranger. And Hani's ultimate is going to be wasted, but it's not really the longest cooldown. Either way, Wind Ranger is a problem hero for Meepwned. And they could go into this mid lane tier 1. They probably should have done this a very long time ago, but at this point, Dyer's BBC lacking their Wind Ranger, there is almost 0% chance that they Dyer's make a real concerted defense, unless Meepwned really cluster up, allowing for an Axe and Earthshaker to blink in. Yeah, fair enough. It's 160 damage times 18 minus reduction. That's absurd. Yeah, you can do the math on that one, because I'm not going to. Math's too hard. I'm not going to do math. Screw that, but uh, we don't need to, because we just know that it does more than 1452 after resistances. So there's that. But uh, they're going to jump to the Roshan pit. Because of the Dark Lord, no goo just yet, but with the wave, this Roshan is at zero armor at the most, really. So yeah, this guy is going to be brought down, and because of the damage that they have now, the DD Shadow Fiend, yeah, they don't have to invest too many heroes into the Roshan pit. But as I said before, BBC have a really good lineup at fighting in the Roshan pit, just not a killing Roshan. Yeah, definitely so. So Meepwned are going to respect that ability for BBC to fight inside this first pit. At least for now, going to back off. Or are they blinking for the Yules onto the Earthshaker? This time around, he doesn't need to use the Requiem. We'll just right-click down Yaps, or one long raise is going to do him in. But with the Focus Fire onto him, as well as the Stone Gaze form, we is in a whole lot of trouble, and he's going to die. That's going to be we down, and now on the sidelines, call for Masquerade. You're going to catch up on Mirage. The Wishshaker Ultimate is being channeled. The Masquerade is dropping low. Now onto the Medusa, it's going to focus as Icarus Dive flies through, but they're not actually able to catch well looks like both teams going to back off at least for now rise is going to eat a couple of quill stacks as well as goo from mirage doesn't look like he's going to chase that one however as both teams are just posturing at this point that's definitely not a trade that i would take shadow fiends has been well we in general has just been getting way far ahead of his team in these past couple of games and well, the chasing power of Meepwned is generally pretty high, but not when you start Radiant's out with you know, such a large distance attack. between the two teams. So, BBC, yeah, they lose their Earthshaker, but they kill off the Shadow Fiend, man. Shadow Fiend, he blinked up the high ground. He did have some vision there, to be fair, but, man, he was just completely blindsided by the fact that Wind Ranger and Medusa were right next to that Earthshaker when he died, and they were able to kill him off in a hurry. So, Meepwned, they have to take a little bit more care about how they approach these fights. They don't really have any clear initiator. And that might be why they needed the Shadow Fiend to do that, but that's not really a way to initiate. It's not going to work unless you go for just one hero who's all alone. Yeah, and that for sure wasn't the case. Focus Fire plus Stone Gaze is a pretty decent combination if you're actually able to get to Latch, and it seemed that Shadow Fiend just wasn't able to turn enough to avoid being turned into stone. For now, both teams are going to sit back on their sides of the map, farm up for a little bit longer. But then again, this little bit of a lull is going to be broken as BBC smoke up as three, and they find themselves a bristle back. He's going to be called Earth Spiked up, Mana Drain. They have the Fissure to chain stun him down. They have a finger if they need it, and they will commit it, but Mirage is still alive. Can they actually finish him off? The egg is being focused by the Medusa, but nobody else is it going to be able to proc. It is just barely no the turn on to Padron Ho. It doesn't have mana shield on and is dropping low. Sunray from long range. Padrino is going to be able to survive. It's on the back lines of the fight. Axe is going to be brought down by Wii. Oh my goodness, what a turn, and this is going to open up Roshan for Meepwned. I don't think it gets any closer than that. Medusa's attack was mid-air. It was just about to connect with that egg, but then Simba exploded out of it. Mirage also a very close call there with that uh, Crimson Guard by himself. A lot of extra survivability, but he uh, was almost called down by the axe. Level 2 Calling Blade with an Aghanim Scepter does do quite a bit of damage, but just not enough. So. The Bristleback is lucky to survive that entire scenario, and they get their Phoenix out of their, out of that egg situation as well. That was such a narrow lead for Meepo, and because of that, they jump right into the Roshan pit because they're conveniently right there to start things up, and they have now an Aegis on the Shadow Fiend. So next time, we if he wants to make that high crown blink blindly, then yeah, go ahead, go for it because you'll have a lot more time to get your teammates into a sort of good backup position, but. It's a nice little win there for Meepwned. They lose the tier 2 tower up on top lane. Aghanim Scepter, Focus Fire is pretty good at taking down those structures. So it's not going to be a 
the cleanest of victories for Mipom, but it's still going to be vastly in their favor. For sure. We looks like he's going to be working towards an Eye of Scotty next, and it's going to be pretty soon incoming for Mipon's side. And, well, these last couple of fights have been looking pretty darn good for them. Right now, it looks like Bristleback going to be heading on towards a BKB with the Ogre Club. And as far as the big items for BBC, not much, except for Padrino, I suppose. Looks like he's going to be finishing up his Lincoln Sphere. Yeah, that's a... Okay, uh, is that actually a decent item? You really just have nasal goo to bring it down very easily. Oh, speak uh, mid lane, yeah. Lion is gonna get a face full of requiem, so that happened. Uh, but Lincoln Sphere, is that really what you want to be doing versus a bristleback? I guess if you block a magic missile, a swap, or a cask, that's kind of nice. But I don't really know if that's gonna be the most reliable pickup for the Dusa. Yeah. Fair enough. Probably even bigger is that we have a Demon Edge item coming up from Windranger, and no matter what it is, it's going to mean that Hook's hitting very hard with that Focus Fire. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was this exact same build in uh, Hook's last game as the Windranger. Uh, it was Crystalis into Daedalus, so a little bit of different sequencing here, but the end objective is still going to be the same. Windranger is going to be dishing and Nipponed. They have the Eye of Scotty complete on the Shadow Fiend. They're going to need an MKB, though, to deal with this Windranger. Once she has Focus Fire, on and wind run on you there's not much that they could do about her except for yules her and try to just you know waste time kill off the rest of her allies but until that happens this is gonna happen focus fire on towers is the real deal putting medusa the quote unquote agility hero to shame tower is gonna be destroyed both on both sides but Pugino left alone a little bit goo is going to connect now Pugino is in a lot of trouble needs a stone gaze shackle though onto mirage plus the turn of stone mascara gonna jump in no spins though because there's no one there to attack plus the sun coming in which will stun everyone unless bbc back off right now death ward is there mascara gonna take a fall Pugino going to get stunned up by that sun explosion yapsor from the side has an echo slam still but he will decide to leave Pugino instead they will just sacrifice their medusa and their axe Getting just the tower in return, but also Hook off to the side is in a little bit of trouble. Has a four staff, has a TP, but he can't quite get any of that because of the three stacks of nasal goo. Now the more minus armor Mirage going to get shackled to a tree, but we with the long range raise will jam it home. That's three kills on the most important targets to kill for me pwned. And they're all still alive. They can go for a push right now. Yeah, my goodness. After the early game where inside the chat especially Simu is being flamed for being a new ping. So those last two fights pretty much make up for it. Finding those perfect timing stacks where you go in with that egg and BBC just weren't in any position to stay and fight. Even if they kill the egg in that situation they probably just get ripped to shreds by Wii and <laughs> Barrage both. Tier 2 tower going to be immediately taken after the fact by Meepwned and at least for now there's not really anything stopping them. They might even be able to take down a tier 3 or at least chunk it down a bit. Yeah, the combo of the Death Ward as well as that Egg means that once those two get dropped, you can't kill the Egg or else you'll die to the Death Ward, so you have to just try to retreat. And that just was too slow from BBC, a little bit too much goo on everyone, a little bit too much Eye of Scotty action from the Shadow Fiends, you can't clean the retreat from that, so if they lose a tier 3, are they going to lose Raxes? Wee's focusing ranged, Mirage focusing melee, they're going to decide to focus on range, but no, Requiem onto the Axe, that's a one hit kill! Oh my god, I don't know how much HP the Axe has, but definitely not enough. Padrino is going to jump right in there with the Stone Gaze. Jason going to get there with the Spike as well. Simba going to go down. We turn to Stone, but he still has the Aegis. Going to turn around and fight Hook, though, with the Focus Fire doing quite a bit of damage. We just going to fight to the death. Has Mirage also there to back him up. Padrino has the Maledict on him. Nice Echo Slam. Going to take out the Aegis and stun too, but will it be enough? Padrino's dropping very low. Maledict won't quite kill him off. Mirage still alive. We going to come back from the dead, but doesn't have a BKB. We'll fight it out with Jason. We'll get the kill. Now onto Hook. He goes. No Wind Run is available. He will get it out eventually. Just needs one more raise to connect. Hook will die in the end. Now Mirage is going to chase forward for this Earthshaker who doesn't have any more mana TP out, but they will give up the chase and just instead decide to go for the Raxus. Jason going to jump right in, has a finger of death in mana, he needs it. Not quite enough damage though, we get to turn around, one more hit to get a kill off the Lion who just bought back. Mirage still relatively healthy as well, they're going to clean out the rest of the mid lane and this is looking really bad for BBC, they needed to make that defense, but now everyone else from me pwned, they're going to back off with a lot of extra gold. Yeah, definitely so. Uh very unfortunate fight for BBC and Meepon find themselves breaking high ground at this point in the game. In a pretty convincing fashion, Shadow Fiend seemingly untouchable throughout that fight, especially at the very end. That Finger of Death unfortunately just a little shy for Lion to actually finish him off. And right click damage from Lion, definitely nothing compared to an SF at this point. Yeah, now Shadow Fiend has another 4,600 gold in the bank. Probably should be uh, that MKB or, you know, some other damage item. For him as he is fairly durable clearly taking a finger of death straight to the dome and not really flinching about it so 
Uh, if Shadow Fiend gets a couple more damage items, then he'll be able to just stand and fight, maybe a little bit of lifesteal down the line. Either way, he'll be... He's filthy rich, so he can get pretty much whatever he wants. It's going to be a straight butterfly for Wii. That's a reasonable way to go. Uh, although, there is still a Demon Edge at Wind Ranger, so she can go straight into the MKB. Any sort of damage item for Shadow Fiend, and the mix of survivability as well, is going to be well warranted. Me pwned. Still have a tier 2 tower in the bottom lane to take, and I don't really think it'll be that difficult for them to do so. But one racks up 30 minutes in the game, and they're looking really good moving forward. Yeah, right now it just feels like Padrino doesn't have enough on this Medusa. Even though he can hold out indefinitely against this one lane of barracks, it's by no means over for BBC. It gets a whole lot harder, and his gold income is going to be stymied. Oh, he's... Oh, they're going to open up with the Requiem combo. It's not going to instantly kill off Padrino. In fact, does a lot less damage than I thought it would. He's completely drained out of mana at this point. Now with the Death Ward channel, it's actually canceled by the Stone Gaze. Padrino survives on 150 HP. Shackle not going to latch, but Hani eventually does him in. As the Witch Doctor mops up the deuce of kill, and now Jason inside the front line is going to get magic missiled up and then clicked down by Wii. Chasing forward with the blink, not able to connect with um, anybody else. So it looks like that's going to be all she wrote as Meepone go up towards top. Maledict doing just enough, and it seems like 1280 is about how much that Shadow Fiend does in Requiem, although I've, it's obviously not entirely accurate. They're going to go straight to the top lane, bristle back with that Crimson with a hell of a lot of strength, and just turn his back and tank the tower all day long. BBC need their Medusa alive. They need the stunts in the line if they're going to take out the Shadow Fiend. They don't have an Aegis to worry about, and we will play a little bit more cautiously because of it, but still the tower is going to be brought down. Pylai Die has a swap and four staff if things get really bad, so... Mirage and Wii, they're really not in too much trouble right now. Hani and Simba also playing very far behind, so they could start with their ultimate combos that I mentioned earlier. Melee Rack's going to fall, and BBC, they just need 20 more seconds, but I don't know if they're going to get 20 more seconds. Maybe Meep Pwned are going to back off because they don't really have that much creep support here, but it's a very clean tier 3 tower Melee Rack's. That's nothing but gains for Meep Pwned. Definitely not, and that's going to be your butterfly all the way finished by Wii as soon as he decides to fly that out to himself, and now they're going to swing bottom. It's about time they finished off this tier 2 tower, and from there on out, maybe go high ground if you win a team fight, or just wait out for the next first shot. It's not that long in coming, just about 40 seconds or so. And Meepon, they definitely have that in mind. It's going to be a relatively lucky one, as uh, a low respawn is going to mean that they could keep up this pressure just unrelenting. But they're also going to set up for Jason. Blink, no Yules, just three hits. Or, you know, everyone's going to clean up the Shadow Fiend's kill. But, yeah, we could have gotten that kill very, very easily just by himself if he decided to pop the BKB. He has a Butterfly also incoming. This Tutu Tower is not going to stand for very long. And BBC, without their Lion now, with the Medusa and Axe, they have a chance at defending this. But Meepone, they're in no rush because top lane and mid lane are both pushing. And I'm pretty sure they're just going to be waiting for Roshan to come back up alive. Yeah, right now Mirage is close to the high ground. But I think it's probably a good choice for Meepone to just go into that Roche pit. As scary as an Echo Slam to Blinking Axes inside the Roche pit. The sun as well as the Witch Doctor Death Ward being channeled is also very high up there just at the speed that they're able to take it it's probably not long for this world the wave is out the presence of the dark lord is there plus the goo is starting to stack all the way up to minus nine bbc they're making a beeline for this one there are illusions though scouting everything out Pugino's gonna pop the ultimate and do absolutely nothing with it he thought everyone was right around the corner but now he's down that's probably bbc's most important skill right now and they don't have it for another minute and a half this is door wide open for Meepone. They were going to go for it anyway, but now they know that it's like going to be even easier. Yeah, I think right now, BBC need nothing less than a miracle coming out from Yapsor and Massacre, and they're going to try to open up with it. Four-man smoke is they only leave the Medusa inside the base, but with the position coming out from Meepone, the best they can hope for is maybe to catch out Wii. He's going to get swapped back by the Venge. They do call up Wii and Echo Slam him too, but the Witch Doctor Death Ward being jumped. Massacre and everybody's being ripped to shreds. He is going to be shackled and it does cancel in the end, but the Requiem's unleashed. And now Padrino is up against the full five-man unit of Meepone and he's gone. Good game, well played. Wii doesn't even lose anything. Oh man, Shadowfiend once again surviving, but as important as it is for BBC to kill off Wii, you also have to respect the combination of those ultimates, the sun as well as that death ward. Death ward was channeled for about like, you know, a couple seconds, but it was interrupted eventually, but the sun got destroyed because no one was focusing that. Everyone had their hands full. They had to kill out the Shadow Fiend, had to kill off the Witch Doctor. No one's really available there just to right click that sun. So Meepwned off of a pretty convincing game four are going to win this best of five. It was a very long, drawn-out one, man, but 
me pwned. This was uh, probably one of the more convincing games, aside from game one, which is just an absolute stomp. And with that, guys, it looks like we're about done here. It's in the best of five. It's taken a hell of a long time. I'm hungry. I'm going to go get something to eat. But if you enjoyed the cast, we sincerely hope you did. Be sure to hit that follow button. Also, follow Hefla TV on Twitter and Facebook. It's both of those dot com slash Hefla TV, like in the upper left hand corner. VODs will be up soon after the broadcast ends. I'm Mike Loris. You can find me at Mike Loris at Twitter. My co casters have been at Coucher. You can find him at Coucher. And for this game, at Grandis V. For, uh, for them on Twitter and everything like that. And that is about it for us. So until next time, guys, we'll see you later. Signing off for now. GG.